Ladies and gentlemen, from NV, CEO of Digital Agriculture, please welcome to the stage Marco Brini. But why should the farmer finally get engaged into these technologies? There is a huge gap among the potential on the left and still huge losses. Millions of tons of food just because of mistakes. So we need to put ourselves in the shoes of the farmer. Farmers are entrepreneurs which are constantly challenged by complex situations. They need to take care of the current crop needs. So we call this sensing. So they need to know what is happening, what are the real needs of the plants. On the other side, they have available remedies, so inputs. For instance, you may have pesticide if there is a bug attacking. You may have uh, inputs such as fertilizer if the plants need that, or water. So you need to identify the right mix of inputs and combine this with the right needs of the plants. You act, and once you acted, then you start over again. This is, the process is as simple as that, but we're going to make it even more simple. Just imagine that the farmer was a cook. And instead of plants, we have customers at the restaurant. So who is the sensor? The sensor, in this case, is the waiter. The waiter should go there and try to understand the, the level of hunger. Are they hungry? What are they taste? And so this is collecting the needs. On the other side, the cook has in the kitchen tools and ingredients. So he needs to find a combination, the perfect combination, identifying a mix. What's, what's the result of it? Acting, in case of cooking, is creating the first course. So we need to repeat this process over and over. And this process, every year, constantly repeated throughout the season, it sends think and act. And if, if you see this inner circle, then we have the Neolithic people that were making use of the plow and the oxes, right? They were trying to identify the pattern of the plants, what the plant needs now. Then we had the tractors, the chemical, and now it's the next generation. We are going to have digital. So nothing changed, just more evoluted tool. And where does artificial intelligence fit? Well, in all three can provide some benefit, but especially in the thinking process. Let's call it the digital thinking frame. It's data processing and action, where the data have been gathered by many enabling technology. The processing is the thinking, and this is where most of the artificial intelligence is. And then you have the action. What is it exactly artificial intelligence? Easily explained. If you go and look for yourself, normally this is what you get. Something very inspiring, either a video or a book or a document. You read it, you feel cool, but you really don't understand it. Or you get technical stuff, you get lost. I like to think about artificial intelligence as the process of learning to walk. Each of us have been through that. And it's as simple as that. You start sensing what's my balance, where I would like to go. Then you think, what shall I do to recover balance and going in that direction? And then you act. And then you start over. You assess your position and move on. Once you have learned, you don't think anymore. You just walk. And you have what in artificial intelligence is called model. You have a model. For instance, you have a model to walk in the beach, on the sand. Again, it's data, data collection, model. So instead of thinking, let's talk about model creation and then deciding. Of course, it's a little more complicated than that. There are multiple passages, but do we really need to go through all this stuff? I mean, could we use a car even if we are not a mechanical engineer? Yes and uh, we can enjoy the benefit of a car and even drive it. The same can be done and is going to be done with artificial intelligence. It's a tool. Nothing more than that. It's a tool. 
So from the tool point of view, what is going to do for agriculture? First of all, it's going to take data. Train of zero and one. These are the data. Then you feed the artificial intelligence, we create model, and then acting. So sense, what does it mean sense? You know about drone, or satellite, or smartphone, metro station, internet of things. You may have a soil sensor, soil moisture sensor, solar radiation sensor, pluviometer. You get tons of data. But a smartphone as well, where people going into the field can provide you information. Those are all data. Then you think about this data, and you decide, okay, What's the scope of thinking? Less nutrients, less pesticide, less water, less labor. Less, let's use less of these inputs while achieving better result. That's the challenge. Finally, you act. You may act manually or with automatic or semi-automatic systems, such as irrigation system, pre-programmed, and more will come. Let's think about agriculture, these four steps. Seeding, soil, plant protection and feeding and harvesting. How can artificial intelligence help in these different domains? Seeding. Breeding is the selection of seed, and they need to go through millions of genes to identify the best seed for that specific condition. This is where you want to have artificial intelligence doing on your behalf. There are treatments, for instance. You want to be informed, collecting all those data which are coming from the field, you want to be informed what is the real risk of the plants to get infected by a disease, by a fungi. Because if there is a high risk, then you're going to spread the product. At that time, not sooner, not late, you need to know when. Otherwise, there is a risk. And this is where artificial intelligence can help. And decision support is the king. These are real companies that are providing service and products based on artificial intelligence. So what are the challenges? Is there something which is slowing down the process? Yes. What are these things? First thing is availability of data. No data input, no data output. It's useless to have a brain if you have no data. So how do you get this data? Well, you have these new enabling technologies that are providing a lot of data. So we are jumping in a situation where we are facing too many data. This is why we need artificial intelligence, to go through all these data. But not just having the data is enough. You, they need to be usable. It's like a different language. You put 10 people in a room, and each one speaks its own language. You have nothing. So they need to translate to the same format, data format. In addition, you need to have quality of data because, you know, junk in, junk out in digital terms. And the motivation to be adopted. So the return on investment. The return on investment will come when you provide indexes. Finally, we have policies and regulations. The tricky part, though, in my opinion, is the social acceptance, cognitive computing and artificial intelligence. But the key difference is that in cognitive computing, we let the machine to provide us recommendation and we take the decision. In artificial intelligence, broadly speaking, we let the computer, the machine, doing its own decision. It's like when you drive a car. You may have a, an assistant parking system, so you control, the machine does the job, or you have a totally automatic machine. What is emotionally scaring people about artificial intelligence. Let's be honest, most of us are afraid of option B, where instead of having artificial intelligence helping us to do a better job, we're going to be guided, enslaved. So this is a matter of concern, and uh, we we'll keep regulation slowing down. I believe we can overcome that just thinking about cognitive computing. And this is indeed the way I like it. This is the way I envisage the boring stuff to be done by the machines. On the other side, you take business decision to provide a tailored solution for your plant instead of a standard approach. 
having this cycle, but this is what is going to happen. It's a combination of factors to finally enjoy healthy food, delicious food for everybody.